To be honest, it has surprised me how long this channel has existed and I have yet to go into detail on the very games this channel is based on. That changes today with this new series where I plan to go into detail on each of the main entries in the Xeno series, and possibly spin-offs as well later on. So let's begin with the first game in the series, 1998's Xeno Gears for the PlayStation 1. Xenogears Origins go well beyond its initial development in 1996. Series creator Tetsuya Takahashi had been concepting such a game as far back as the early 90s during his earliest days at Squaresoft. In 1995, he would marry fellow co-worker Kaori Tanaka, and together the two would refine Takahashi's concept and then submit it as the plot for the next game in the Final Fantasy series, which Takahashi was involved with. The script would be rejected due to being too dark and complicated for the mass audience which played Final Fantasy. However, Takahashi and Tanaka would be allowed to develop the script as a separate project. As its own project, the couple attempted to make the script a sequel to Chrono Trigger, however this too would not work out and the project would end up becoming a standalone game. The now famous Xeno prefix would be chosen very on to represent the game's strange alien-like feel, however the suffix Giz would end up being chosen after multiple suggestions on what to call the mech units in the game. In fact, in the earliest concepts Giz were going to be summon spirits much like in the Final Fantasy series. Xenogears development would be rough, funding and manpower would be limited when compared with Square's other projects such as Final Fantasy VII. This resulted in a lot of the content on the second disc of the game being cut and replaced with lengthy dialogue scenes. Square was also unsure about localising the game to the west due to the sense of religious issues the game covered. The translation would go ahead, but due to the complexity of the script, the English translation team would work directly with the development team to ensure the themes were properly carried over. So let's see how this game turned out. Xenogear's story starts 10,000 years in the past where we see a giant spaceship experience a catastrophic malfunction as a hostile entity attempts to take over the vessel. In a last ditch effort to prevent the entity taking over, the captain activates the ship's self-destruct, destroying the vessel, which crashes into a nearby planet. The story then jumps to the present day where we meet Fei Wong, who lives a quiet life in a small village called Lahan. However, Fei's world is turned upside down when the village gets caught up in a battle between the forces of Kislev and Arv the two major nations on the continent who have been locked in a centuries long war. Both sides use giant mechs known as gears which rain massive destruction on the village. Faye finds one of these gears unmanned and acting on instinct gets inside and begins to fight off the enemy gears. However, after seeing one of his friends gets shot, Faye loses control and creates a huge explosion which destroys the village. Faye awakens the next day to find the surviving villagers furious at him for destroying their homes. Faye takes the advice of the village doctor Saito Nozuki and leaves the village heading for the nation of Arv. While on the way, Faye meets a strange woman by the name of Eliheim von Houten, or just Elle for short. Faye begins to feel some strange connection with Elle, however she chooses to remain distant from him. Sidon shows up soon after, along with a gear that Faye used. Sidon reveals the gear's name to be Weltall, and decides to join Faye on his journey. Later that night, Saiton and Elle talk, and Saiton finds out that Elle was working for a third faction in the war that has been playing both sides, and it was in fact her who brought Weltall, which she stole, into Lahan, leading up to the previous events. Not wanting to cause any more problems, she flees before Faye wakes up. Faye, who overheard parts of the conversation, decides to continue with Saiton into the Arv Desert, where he meets the malicious figure Garth, who claims to know Faye's past and has been grooming him to one day destroy God. Faye is later captured by the Arv military along with Saiten, but the two are later rescued during a raid led by Bartholomew Fatima, who turns out to be the heir of the throne of Arv. Bart is currently fighting a Gruella campaign to take the throne of the evil Prime Minister Sharkhan, and after being initially reluctant, Faye offers to help. The story continues from there, however I do not have all day, so I recommend this video by Oni Black Mage for the full story breakdown. Xenogears is your pretty standard JRPG when it comes to its layout. Progress is made by travelling from area to area and fighting slash talking to the required targets to progress the story. Areas are connected by an overworld which slowly opens up to the player as they progress through the game. And encounters with the enemy will randomly take place in the overworld as well as any areas considered to be dungeons, which will switch the game over to the battle screen. 
Xenogears, however, does have some unique features in the character's ability to jump and the player's ability to rotate the camera. Both these features were more commonly found in platformers at the time over an RPG. These features encourage exploration, with hidden items being located up on ledges and around corners. Unlike later games in the series, Xenogears does not have any large focus on side quests, keeping the focus on the main story. The cast consists of 9 playable characters which puts it in the higher end of the cast size. Three of these characters can be in the battle party at any one time, and all but one has access to a personal gear. Both the characters and gears can equip items to improve their stats and abilities. Characters can also switch between piloting gears and walking on the fly, however certain areas of the game require the use of gears, while others, such as buildings, are too small for the gears to fit in. Takahashi initially wanted the game in full 3D, however, due to hardware limitations, the game instead would deliver a hybrid model, with backgrounds and vehicles in 3D, while the characters and sprites would instead stay in 2D. For some this was a blessing in disguise, claiming Xenia Gears presents a lot better than its fellow PS1 Final Fantasy games, whose blocky 3D sprites have become the target of many jokes. Xenia Gears presentation also benefits from the sheer number of sprites used, which deliver extremely fluid motions from the characters, especially in battle. Battles for the most part play like a usual turn-based affair, however your character's turn is determined by the timer gauge next to the character. When this gauge is filled, the character will act, and the speed it is refilled by is determined by the character's own speed stat. Thus, in certain circumstances, the same character might be able to act multiple times in a row before a slower character can move. Battles are split into foot and gear battles, which, while similar, play differently. Foot battles are based around the game's combo system, in which attacks are conducted by a series of light, medium and heavy attacks. The number of these attacks is determined by the character's action points, or AP. If the player conducts enough of certain combo attacks, they will be rewarded with death blows. Attacks, which by inputting a selection of buttons, will result in a powerful alternative attack, which could deal massive damage to the enemies. Along with this, characters can unleash a series of death blows using saved AP for massive damage in some spectacular animations. This also promotes the strategic use of holding back attacks, only to unleash a flurry of combos when the time is right. Characters also have access to magical abilities, with names differing from character to character, with Fei using Chai and Saitan using Arcane. However, they all function like spells in regular JRPGs, using a limited mana gauge called EP. These spells can help heal and boost your allies, as well as attack and debuff the enemy. In gear battles, attacks are limited by a fuel gauge, in which stronger attacks will consume more fuel. They also have an attack level, which is raised by attacks in battle, and can be used to unleash gear variants of learned death blows. Another feature is the Gears Booster System, where, for additional fuel, Gears can greatly increase their attack rate as well as unlock additional abilities. Xeno Gears' soundtrack was composed by acclaimed musician Yatsuri Mitsuda, who had previously worked on Chrono Trigger and would later go on to work with Takahashi on future Xeno games. Mitsuda would take a lot of influence from traditional Irish Celtic music, which is most notable in pieces such as the overworld theme, Emotions. He would also try and keep the tracks quite minimalistic, to help bring out the melody, which I personally think works really well in video games and helps make the pieces iconic. Mitsuda has named Xenogears as one of his best soundtracks, and I have to agree, with pieces like Flight, Fuse and Night of Fire being highlights for me as great catchy tunes that fit the atmosphere of the game very well. Xenogears would also begin the trend of vocal end credit songs, which if you've watched my previous video, you know I love. Northern Irish singer Joanne Hogg would be brought on to record the ending song, Small Two of Pieces, a beautiful piece which still remains one of the best ending songs in the series, even if the words make little to no sense. While talking about Joanne, it should also be noted that she also recorded the game's opening song, Star of Tears, however this song was later scrapped when the opening was deemed too long. This song can be found on YouTube, and its likeness can also be heard in the Overworld theme. To be honest, outside of this review, I don't really find myself coming back to Xenogears, and that's mainly due to Xenogears status as the old one out, the game that stands alone. For Xenoblade fans, you have the next release to get hyped for, and even though Xenosaga for the most part is dead, you at least have more than one game to play, plus Cosmos is still making cameos in games such as Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and Tales of Vesperia. However, as for Xenogears, thanks to Square, it will most likely forever remain a standalone experiment from the 90s. While I will defend Xenogears as a better made game than most of the Xenosaga series, its darker themes and outdated features will always be an off-putting factor for me. 
I am aware of Xenogears Perfect Works, which covers the planned six games which would have originally made up the Xenogears series, with Xenogears itself being the fifth entry. I am also aware of the large fanbase this game has, with countless discussion threads studying the deeper themes of this game. However, I have yet to read Perfect Works, nor join these threads, as I am more interested in the later two series. Despite my personal opinions and the fact that this game is half unfinished, I do recommend Xenogears as a game every Xeno series fan play at least once so they can see the origins of the series they love so much. And hey, if you do end up liking it and it's 2D on 3D art style, you can always play Octopath Traveler and pretend it's a HD remake of Xenogears. With Xenogears out of the way, it's time I turn my attention to the Xenosaga series and cover Episode 1, De Willy Zut March. <laughs> 